figured this to try it out. You got it in? I'm going to do this. Okay. No. But I know how I'm going to get it in now. Okay. Suddenly it has happened to me right in front of my face. I got it in the whole old. Except there's some bare wire showing on that okay. side. What, what I usually will do with that is just grab and pull a little harder to get it through. You can usually pull until it goes through. Once it's through, it's easier to put a little bit of brute force on it just until you get it through. There is a subtle level of brute force, though. If you brute force too hard, you can damage things. So, <laughs> so it's kind of a, a I'm not balancing act. Also, those don't grip worth a crap, and I usually use these when I'm trying to grip something because they have some teeth to them. That would be great. You just don't want to use the teethed ones on too much that are in an area where the wire will remain because they can cause nicks in it that will cause it to stress fracture later. But, all right, well, all right. at any rate. No, but in this case, you're pulling past the point where you're soldering, so it's fine. All right. All right. Now, this one goes into the right side of the same pot. This one over here. Yep. Why are you so close? I did those. Um, I would have extended them and made it look better. <laughs> I would have had it go around. You know, there's a there's a method. You see this? How yeah. it's going to the sides of each one so it just looks nice and pretty. <laughs> That's what I get for slacking. Yep. Now, you did a great job, of course. Next is your channel switch, which is this switch here. And um, I'm thinking down will be good to be normal and up will be derived. So up with up drive that means you want to connect it to these top two okay. so these two wires here they're, they're these two i think go to connect to the top two of this switch that's the it channel matter switch. which to which no because you're just closing a switch and, and so in that case it does not really matter which is which because right now when you connect the two together if the switch is in the wrong direction they just won't be connected and when the switch is in the other direction they will be connected. which which is which perfecto Let's test, because we want to test. Oh, I should have tested before I soldered. That's my problem, is I don't remember to test. Well, no, you want to test after soldering, because well, the solder is what makes both. the connection. No, no okay. because if the metal's touching it, it should still make a connection, right? Yeah. You, and you, so you're saying you'd like to make sure you have a make good sure physical I have, connection. Well, I just want to make sure I have the right thing, that I'm not going to put oh. soldered into the wrong pot, gotcha. like I did last time, because then it's a pain in the butt. All right, which one was this one? The channel? Channel switch, yep. And the switch is engaged. Now if I turn the switch off, you should try it again. You won't get continuity of both, only to one. I hope that's the case. That's the case. Right. And then the, what, oh wait. And so then either I get one and then yeah, not you should the other. get one for okay. uh, yeah. The switch on jumpers them together and they become one wire basically. But if the switch All is closed, right. or I mean it's open, then you wouldn't get it. On Another sides. solder complete. Cha ching. All right, so now what we've got to do, we uh, had almost forgotten this, but I've got the shielded wires and I also have the shields connected to a ground here. That ground and these connections are going to go up to the pot. And then we'll run a third separate wire as well, connecting to the same point as those two wires and then over. So these are our OD drive and the other ends of these plus this ground wire are going to connect into here. So she's going to go ahead and wire that up now. Fun times. Yep. And you may just want to do these first three first, including yeah. this one, and then try and solder the other ones over at this end afterwards. So yep. let's fire up the fan. <sighs> no. What'd you do? The wire just broke. So I'm going to have to strip the end mm -hmm. a little bit. I was just bending it. I don't know. It. That won't strip it because it's too thin for that. That's another thing I need to do is when I've replaced these. These ones are good, but they stop at like 18 and this is like 22 gauge wire. So it oh. won't strip that. But I can oh. get it to strip with the other guy. I'm sorry. sorry. Shite, people. Okay. I don't know how I managed that one. All right, I'll be a little more careful. Um, so now we can do these switches and I pulled the other one out temporarily to make the wiring of those a little easier. So let me explain this to the crowd. So with the way uh, effects loops work, you want with nothing plugged in for the tip of the main input one to connect to the switch of this one so that it automatically connects to the tip of this one and it just sends it through. But the second you might insert a jack into this guy of some kind, it separates it out and that in theory means that you're, I'm sorry I said that backwards. No, that's right. 
Yeah, and, oh, and yeah. I can even show you on the actual picture. This will, I'll probably just show this on screen because it may be hard to see. But a typical loop, you'll see the input is the tip is connected to the switch, Con or the switch of the input connects over to the output's tip, uh, just so that you can ensure that the, or sorry, I said that backwards again. The, uh, because in, in this one it's called send and return, this one's output and input, and that's what's getting me backwards in my head. So the, um, it, I'll show it on screen because I can't, but basically the um, output or the send it connects to the wipers, the tip of it connects directly to, to that. But you also jumper that tip connection of the output slash send to the switch of the return slash input. Uh, and that will mean that it just goes through if they're not connected. The second you put something into the input, meaning you've pulled an input output loop, it disconnects that circuit and it interrupts the connection between the output and the input. Uh, and so the what we've done is, and I will need to reframe, We've basically intentionally put these two really close to each other. So this is the um, uh, the switch of this one to the yeah, and that's backwards from what I just explained. Uh, so we need to adjust. So basically, the well, it's supposed to be the switch of this one, which is no, this the one. tip of this one, which is this one, needs to connect to the switch well, of this one. You told me that it was switched. I know, but tip. I'm just looking at it again. So basically, okay. we need to adjust these a little bit again, yet again. So. Um, the tip of the preamp out just connects to the tip and it's not a big deal, but you want that same tip connection from the output so of the preamp the out, which is the switch. send. You want the tip of the send connected to the switch of the return. All right, so I guess we did it backwards. Yeah, we did. So I'm just quickly trying to adjust these. You want them as, you don't necessarily have to have them touching because you can use a wire to jump over them, but you definitely don't want the other ones touching. So I'm going to try and rotate this. So the tip here is physically very close to the switch there, like that. And that looks correct now. Okay, uh, she's gonna basically connect these two. The first one, just go, or the sec this one here, which is the return, will just connect to the tip connection, which is this guy here. The second one is going to jump her between those two, and then we don't need to connect this one at all on this guy, so. But you'll see a connection to all three on this one because this ground one will, I'm sorry, yeah, this ground one will connect around to that ground one and go to a ground. So if you want to start doing that, actually, we'll stop recording for a minute okay. and be back with a cut. Okay, so we realize it's going to be kind of hard to solder down into here, so we're going to do it a little differently. I've got the piece that we're going to use for solder connection. She's going to cut this black lead to the kind of the distance we'll roughly need for it. You're what back in the corner instead what of the middle. There you go. And then we're going to solder both this and another black wire that I cut. I think she might have that over there somewhere. I don't see it here now. Um, yes, I have that. So we'll solder both of those into this. Then she can, then I can go put it, or she or I can go connect it down to the board afterwards so that we're not battling the, <laughs> trying to solder down there. So. Just and these are a little bit old. You can see how they look kind of white-ish. That whitish color is oxidation that's built up on it, so we're going to put a little of the flux pin on it as well. No, oh, you already cut we, that one. We only need, yeah, we only need one wire. Oh, I thought we needed one for here, one for here. Well, no, you're going to make a short jumper between those two. Oh. You just need one that connects this ground and that ground, and then you'll make that so one. So I'll just do these two in here. Yeah, we just do those two in there. Uh, okay, so let's put the stuff on. Do I need to put the stuff on? Yeah, first? you can put the stuff on it too. It doesn't. It doesn't matter if it gets on the lead as well. But you, you just basically will put the stuff on it. Now I am doing something a little different than the way the actual notes do it. You should probably stick to the notes. But the notes said to connect the um, screen ground to the same ground as the power tubes. And in this case, that would probably work just fine because the 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 effects loop is just right after the phase inverter or right. Sorry, right before the phase inverter? I think it's right after. Let me look at the schematic really quickly. Uh, and that will, it's, oh, so it's right after the master volume, but right before the the um, phase inverter. But that's where the signal is near its strongest, because the phase inverter doesn't give you boost, it just is what splits the signal into the two uh, sides of the output section. So why aren't we doing it that way? Because uh, I just want to go for closest here. And I'm also still way over here, and the most sensitive part of the input is way over here. So, in theory, 
The less grounds you have, the better. But uh, Dumble himself did use quite often about five or six different grounds. He'd do power tubes in one section, phase inward in another. Uh, he'd do kind of the uh, some of the preamp section and the drive in one area, and then the other, the main, the earliest preamp section in another, if I remember correctly. So effectively, as long as you're careful to not put very heavy current areas like the power tubes near the front end, you're going to be okay. It reduces the chance of a, of a ground loop. So, all right, got side of the second one. And then when she gets the grounds reference, she can then connect in the two uh, to, the, to the tips of each of the other two, the send and return. Okay. And I think it looks like I've got it to both sides. Yep, it looks like it's a little bit. And we can actually test that <coughs> by doing continuity between the point here and the tip here right now. And it works. Now, but if I short that tip, or if I put in an input. Like, uh oh. Uh oh. Did I do something wrong? No, well, maybe I did something wrong. I don't know. Well, you're still touching that thing whether you pull it or not. So, is it you need to touch it on that other thing? No, so. I'm trying to the think. inside of the switch? Let me look at a separate switch for a second. The center pin should be the tip, I think. No. This is the tip. He lied. I lied. I did it wrong. So. I guess that's why we test before we solder and so, I didn't do that. Well, so. Okay. So what we need to do now is we're going to have to desolder that hole and pull the wire out and we have to rotate it again. So what I messed up there was I thought this center pin was the tip, but it's, this is the tip. The center pin is the switch. So I need to rotate this to here. This needs to go here. So these two need to be touching and this one. Yeah. So we need to disconnect the desolder. The middle wire there so i just got those backwards and i apologize i'll get it hot if you want to get the solder sucker i guess you should be able to just get the uh, you like your pliers your your tweezers or anything like that and once it heats just pull it out well, let's check continuity too while we're at it so ground or no not ground no problem on this one so that's good but if i push this away it goes away. So if you insert a jack, it disappears. Good. That's right. So what I did there, I am kind of was blocking, so I'll show you. I effectively took and put continuity. Oh, I'll let her be done there first. Is that right, right there? It should be. As long as it's out of the way of where the jack's being inserted. And you can look with the jack just by inserting one. Yep. As long as that's not going to touch or pinch it or crush it later. So I touched touch continuity tester to the one that we were connecting, which is this one right here, which is the send. And then I touched here, which it's supposed to be on, and that worked. And I touched here, and it's only supposed to be on one switch, but it worked. But then I applied pressure with the lead enough to break that away. I don't know if I can show this well from with the camera, but you break that away a little bit, and that allows that switch to turn off. That's what happens when you insert a jack. In theory, I could have also just inserted something in the jack, and that would have done the same thing. But you can hopefully see that breaking away when I put that in. So, all right. So now it's time to wire up the second part of that, which is the bottom wire down there with this one. Uh, I, it does, but the one thing I, again, I usually like to do with these is bend them once they're in and then reflow the solder after. So, right. so that you still guarantee that kind of good physical connection and then you solder it again, just reflow it a little bit. You could put a little bit of fresh solder on it as well if you want. Just to make sure, because sticking a, through a hole and leaving it that way can sometimes lead to bad results later. Okay. So once you heat this, it'll kind of sink back up down a teeny bit, but that bend will keep it in place at the same time. There you go. Perfect. All right. Okay. So now comes a little bit more complicated one. So I, I wanted to kind of quickly talk through this. Um, was if you, I explained this to her off screen and I will try to explain this on screen now as well. This is the switching jack. Oh, no, I'm not on screen. I'll have to, this is the switching jack and it has... Two rows. This is a cliff style jack. This is one's by a company called Neutrik. Sadly, it's PC like uh, type connections or uh, 
like solder, what do you call it, circuit board style connections, and we're gonna have to just wrap a lead around it anyway and solder it. But as long as we get a complete wrap around so that you get a, like a 360 wrap around, that should be enough to make physical contact and then solder it on. But the point I wanted to make here is that the way a switch jack like this works, like any switch, is when I put the connection of my ground like that, I would touch this side, I'll get beeping. But if I put a jack in, then I won't get that beeping because I've now separated the switch. See that? No beeping. And you need to determine also which to learn and understand how this works. You need to, you can physically see that when you put that in, there's a, it drops these down a little bit. So that would mean that these two are separated, but that doesn't necessarily tell you which one is the one that is the switched and which isn't. You can kind of visually see these three are now disconnected from the other side. So it's really these three are the switched, but you can also get a simple, just put in the jack or the cable like I've got it in and then find the other end. Let's see if I can find the other end. And then instead of using like this tile tip, I've got some good clamping tips. Where's that other one, the black one? I don't see it. Oh. So basically you could say, grab this, clamp it to the tip like that. Do you see that? Uh, I've got that connected to the tip. And then I come over here and I can see, I still get continuity on that side, but I don't on this side. So that's the whole point is that this is the switch side over here. So I just explained that to her. So the connections that say um, the regular like tip and sleeve just go here but tip switch and sleeve switch will go on this side. And then we don't need to worry about this switched ground. We don't want to switch grounds. So the ground will just connect to this side that's always connected and that's it. So she's going to go ahead now and connect that, wire those up. I just have to put it back in. And well, I'm wondering if do you want to solder I it out? Solder it out. You and could. Maybe have it held by like that little stand thing you've got upstairs. I can go get the stand. Feet. Yep. So we'll take a quick break and we'll get her set up to solder this at least. I'll be right back. Okay, so now she's, we've got it kind of set up where you can see this is a little bit easier for her to access it and then we'll move it down into the hole afterwards. But, so she's going to do the ground first. What I usually would do is kind of hold the, the lead with one hand like this, mm -hmm. get it where I want it, grab this and then just spin it around. Not this, oh, that's got the probably better grip, but the, that one, yeah. Just grab it by the very end after you're holding it in place around the thing and then spin it around kind of. All right. If I'm reading this correctly, the shield is this one. Not, oh, why is it going to that one too? I better ask him and make sure that it's supposed to do that. Oh, it's going to that one too. All right, well, let's try this. The ring. It's doing both sides of the ring. And the shield, okay. The ring switch. I'm sure there's something that has to do with um but that's only doing the ring. And and the shield. Okay. I'm sure that has something to do with something. <laughs> Maybe once we put the switch in, this is the tip, tip switch. This isn't working on either. There it goes. All right, so Angie finished soldering as you see, and she was trying to test it and wasn't sure how to test it. So the first test really is just to make sure that um, all of the important connections are giving you continuity on all places, which with the no switching in, really you just have to test the, um, like both tip points to both tip points and you should get continuity always on all of them because they're switched right now. That's the ground. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Now that was also you creeping with everywhere else. With those two. Why? Is it supposed to do that? That's what I was concerned uh, about. It shouldn't. I don't think. Do we need to undo the shield? Did I solder well, wrong? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't see, see any anything. Solder but now try and do it again. Just out of curiosity. I don't think it'll change anything but I want to see if it will change anything but shield okay now it's not going oh it's so that just means that there's been a connection intentionally somewhere on the board between here and here unless it's switched the switching it's part of the switching that circuit I think see if this also connects to the no okay no it's just the ring that's connecting to the shield hmm. Hmm. well um oh could we have a switch? 
What is the ring one? That is preamp boost. Is the preamp boost switch engaged or not? I don't remember which one that is. Preamp boost is right here. Now try and test it. Oh, that was, no, that's not preamp boost. That's the, uh, cause it has three. Oh, sorry, this is. So now try and see if we get that same beeping or not. Shield, shield, no ring. Okay, so that was what it was. So the, um, this switch is controlled by the front panel and by that thing. And so, um, and now it's doing it. The ring is doing the shield. The shield isn't doing the ring. Say that again, I'm sorry. So if I have it on ring down here. Uh-huh. It's not doing shield. It was, maybe I was accidentally touching it weird. There's ring. Yeah. Well, maybe it's not. Maybe I was just had it. Yeah, weird. you might have actually been between the two. So I think what that does is that's part of what kind of ties in the switches to the front panel and back again. If the switch is engaged, it'll still have continuity because the switch is on. Okay. If you don't have a jack in at all and the switch is engaged, the switch will work. But as soon as you put the jack in, it separates those. Hmm. So this may provide the global ground for not only the foot switch, but also all of the other parts that are these front panel switches. Uh, and that's part of the circuit board, I'm guessing. So it looks like that's working fine. So the other thing that we really wanted to check, we did while we were doing this, was that when you engage the switch, these are disengaging. Um, so I think that everything looks okay there now. So, um, all right, so we can then kind of, first let me bend it down. Uh, Hmm. I want to make sure that the wires get put in a way that makes it look nice. So I'm trying to think okay. of how to do well, that. I'll, let's see. Let's do the blue over here, like the EA, and then we'll. And the all black down. kind of is bending forward. Make sure it doesn't get pinched against the chassis or something weird. The shield. Yeah. Nothing is against the chassis. Okay, and this is all using a shielded plastic jack on purpose to avoid any kind of potential earthing that we don't want. There we go. We're in business. All right, so we are done with the front half. Uh, we are gonna we're gonna spin the amp around, but we're gonna come back and do that at another point um, because we're both I think tired for the day, so probably tomorrow. Uh, and uh, so what I am gonna do though quickly, I also did solder some stuff down here off the camera. I forgot to, so I'm gonna kind of reposition the camera, get in a little bit closer on those, and we'll talk about that. Bye. So I wanted to kind of cover over right now uh, the first the connections on the board. So I did take this is this I said I wasn't gonna use the standby but I realized I have a hole for it and there's no point in me taking out and leaving an empty hole so I did wire in the standby switch um, I, I just generally leave my standby switch on on my amps most of the time um, but I took the uh, the white lead used to come to a jumper on the board and then back but I just put the white lead straight here same with the black lead but I still need to use um, I'll have to rearrange the position in a minute to show you the black what I did there for the fusing it but uh, and then I ran the high voltage into here and I've run the um, bias into here as well. So these are all now soldered down as well. I didn't use the filament one as I, um, I think I've mentioned, but if not, I'll show it again. I basically instead decided to use a simple um, turret strip here. Uh, and I've put, you know, the each side of the um, heaters to here and I have a hundred ohm to the ground point in the center of it. And then I ran those off of the heaters. And then we also have the little the uh, light that comes in as it was well. So I'm going to try and readjust to a position where we can see that and then we'll take a peek at that. Okay, now you can see what I did here was I just took the part that comes out of the fuse, uh, put a shrink tube on it and soldered it on and then shrink tube it. So this is now fused correctly and then it goes into the primary side and then everything comes out the secondary side. So we didn't need any extra special jumpers. They're all just kind of connected in now and we are good to go. So Next time around, we're going to be flipping this around and working on the other half over here. So it's connecting up all the tube sockets and then the amp will basically be done. So back to that here shortly. All right, gang, um, Lala is going to be busy with other stuff today. So I am going to try and do all the tube sockets now, which will kind of wrap us up. First though, I want to show you a cool gift I got from her today. I got some really nice probe master probes um, and they come with some cool screw on tips as well. There are three different types. Pretty stoked. They're, they're nice. Uh, I've heard about these through EEV blog. So they have your kind of like these little clamp style. They've got the alligator clip style and they've even got a like a terminal style like if you were say working with a power supply and you just wanted to watch what the power supply was doing and bolt it right into that. So very high quality, extremely sharp, almost to the dangerous level. Um, and you know if I put it on, because they're gold in continuity mode, it's got a very fast, high quality, good connection, 
So, you know, I can test continuity of things and see if my ground connections are working. Just point this to a ground pos position somewhere and look at ground connections like this one. Exactly, you know, so anyway, at any rate, I am going to fire up the soldering iron. I did fire up the soldering iron. I'm going to turn on my fan and I'm gonna get to soldering. So I'm gonna reposition the camera now also in the crib over here, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so now I've got it kind of tilted up this way so I can kind of see these sockets a bit better. And I also have to get a ground over here. Uh, so that just makes this a little easier. I'm also going to, uh, this is the just another ground connection I have right underneath it. It was part of the old amp. And this goes to the, what's going to be the phase inverter ground. I also have the output transformer center tap, which is here. I'm, both, I'm cutting both of those up fairly short, just so they kind of curl over and I have to saw them down to the top. And then I also have, this is going to be my negative feedback wire, which I will kind of, carefully like feed through this way until I bring it in. So I'm gonna go ahead and connect all those three right now. Perfect. All right. So at this point, that was the last little bit of soldering in theory that we needed to do. So we now have a fully connected, fully ready to go amplifier. So um, I will be taking time to carefully reassess everything, make sure nothing looks wrong. One of the common good things to actually do on the onset at this point is to check some grounds and to make sure that all of our grounds are met and also to make sure that nothing on the power rail is grounded. So I'm going to screw on a simple clippy thing here for the uh, ground. Oh no. I think that's looking good. So what I'm likely to do here soon is I think the amp is together. I'm going to get a variac since this is kind of a major gut rebuild, I know the transformers are good, but I want to kind of slowly bring up the voltages and test like about here where I'm getting my output and my first nodes. And at like say 10 or 12 volts DC, just to make sure that I'm getting positive voltage here, etc. So we'll kind of come back to that here shortly. So, but uh, I think for this video at this point, it's, I think I might have a stopping point. It's done. We now just need to do the power on and first test and make sure things look good. So we'll uh, have that coming up either in this video or the next video, but we'll, we'll see from there. Cheers.